first of all, thank the organizers for this invitation. It's a real pleasure to be here. Um, yes, I am. So I'm going to talk about the surface quasi-geostrophic equation. And my collaborators are Angel Castro, who is uh, in Madrid as well, and Javier Gomez Serrano, who is at Princeton. So what is the surface quasi-geostrophic equation? Well, this is uh, an equation in dimension two. We're in the plane. There are no boundaries. Theta is the unknown. Theta is a scalar function and is transported by an incompressible fluid. Since the velocity field is incompressible, we can define a stream function <coughs> such that the velocity is equal to the gradient perpendicular of the stream function and then the relation between the stream function and the scalar theta is given by the square root of the Laplacian. If we write down the velocity in terms of theta, then what we have is that the velocity are the Riesz transforms of theta. So the outline of my talk is, um, since I'm the only one speaking on SQG, uh, I will give a, an introduction, small introduction of what is known and uh, properties. Then I will present um, uh, the theorem I want to introduce. And then I will give a brief uh, sketch of the proof. And during the proof, I will then uh, talk about uh, patches, solutions of patch, patch, patch solutions. Because the motivation of the proof comes from the vortex patch problem. OK, so the question is traffic is a model uh, that models the dynamics of big masses of air in the mid-latitudes where the Coriolis force plays an important role. Um, and this is uh, the quasi-geotrophic equation, it's a three-dimensional equation, and the dynamics that happens at the surface is what is known as the surface quasi-geotrophic equation, which is this one. So this model, um, uh, here's uh, several references, um, it has been uh, posted and studied in several of, uh, uh, papers in the geophysical uh, context. But it was not until 1994 that um, Peter Constantine and Dimaida and Esteban Tabak realized that this was a very good model. It was a two-dimensional model of the 3D Euler equations. So let me describe why. Here we have 3D Euler and 2D is QG. So I'm going to look at the 3D incompressible Euler equations in the vorticity form. So the vorticity is the curl of the velocity. And the equation for the omega, the vorticity, is where uh, omega is a vector and is divergent free and the velocity is divergent free as well. And the gradient of u is, in terms of the vorticity, a single integral operator acting on the omega. Okay. So we look at, we compare this with the surface quasi-distrophic equation. The, what plays the role of the vorticity will be the gradient perpendicular of theta, which it's the derivative with respect to x2 of theta, partial theta, with the derivative with respect to x1. And the equation for this vector is equivalent to the equation that the vorticity satisfies, but this is a vector in three dimensions, this is a vector in two dimensions. The, uh, of course, grad the gradient perpendicular theta is divergent free, and the velocity is divergent free as well. And the gradient of u are single integral operators, Riesz transforms of the gradient perpendicular. So 
but there is also a, a relation by, with the conservative quantities. In the case of Euler, um, vortex lines move with the flow. Vortex lines are tangent to the vorticity in all points, and they actually move, they're transported by the flow. And the L2 of the velocity, the energy, is conserved. Well, in the case of SQG, the, the, uh, the level sets of theta plays the role of the vortex lines. They are tangent to the gradient perpendicular of theta, and since it's a transport equation, the level sets move with the flow. And the energy is conserved as well. There's, since there's a transport equation, and for SQD there are more quantities conserved, is that you actually can bound the LP norm of, uh, of the velocity for P bigger than one and strictly smaller than infinity, and this is bounded by the initial data. Mm -hmm. And this is because the velocity are the restraint forms of, uh, of theta. And the LP norms of theta are conserved uh, because of the transport equation. Okay? So uh, what do we know here? We have local existence in certain HK solid norm. And in the case of SQG, similar local existence. May, the k may vary because we are three or two dimensions. Hmm? And the problem of the formation of singularities are open for both. Now, the criterions for the formation of singularities for Euler, well, I can mention two. Uh, the Bilkatomaida criteria, which says that if you control the integral in time of the L infinity norm of the vorticity, then there's no blow up at time capital T. Well, similar thing is true for SQG if you control the L, uh, the L infinity norm of the gradient of theta, gradient perpendicular if we want to compare one with the other, yes. And there is the Constantine Maida, the Constantine Pfefferman Maida result that if you control the direction field of the vorticity, so if it remains Lipschitz, then there's no singularities. So in the case of SQG, identical theorem is true for the direction field of the gradient perpendicular of theta. Okay. So um, so it has to, if, if there's a singularity, the Lipschitz norm has to stop being bounded. Okay, so uh, there's goes uh, the similarities with one equation and the other. And now, uh, is there singularities for SQG? And the answer is we have no idea. Okay. Numerics uh, don't show any evidence for smooth, smooth initial data. Okay, there's no evidence at all. Uh, and, uh, but in order to get a flavor of it, let me uh, toy around and, and, and look at some 1D models. So we are in, uh, so we have a transport equation and the velocity is the risk transform, so in one dimension, uh, let's take the velocity to be the Hilbert transform of, of, in this case, let me call it F, our unknown, so the usual tra uh, Hilbert transform, and we look at, let's take this model, where the F is transported by this flow. Okay. 
and uh, let's take the initial uh, initial data f0 to be bigger or equal to 0. This is, if this is true initially, since it's a transport equation, we'll maintain like this, and the, and the energy actually will decay when f is positive. So for this, we have, we can prove local existence in some solo uh, space, and there is finite time singularities. for this model, for all initial data. This is strictly bigger or equal to zero. But of course, in this model, there's the incompressibility doesn't play any role. So let's do the following. Uh, let's change, take the divergence outside the nonlinear term. So the SQG, let's write, so this will be another model. Let's write the SQG as the divergence of U theta. So we just took the divergence outside and write the 1D model in this case. And what we have is this uh, toy model. And for this, and let's take for the Cauchy problem f of 0 bigger or equal to 0. So 1, we have local existence. In HK, but two, if the initial data is strictly positive, then there's global existence. Three, if there exists a x naught such that f of x naught is zero, then uh, finite time singularities. At the point x naught. Okay? For the same model, if, if the data stays positive for the model A? Yes. For A, not for B. Yes. Yeah, and for B. Hmm? B. Oh, B is, B is this model. So this is SQG, just to justify Taking the uh, since I'm taking the divergent free outside, so the model will be the Hilbert transform inside and the derivative outside. So this model is the uh, is the version of. Um, <coughs> Are the equations coupled? This, this one and this one. No, the derivative here is hitting. Is all, all the derivative is outside. Yeah, yeah. This is a transport equation, and here the derivative is outside. Uh, but just to see that the incompressibility mm. may change. Uh, isn't it? Well, it's a, uh, just to get the flavor. Yeah. Okay, good. Can, can I ask one question again about, you mentioned numerics of SQG, so there's no evidence of singularity. If, this, if, if the initial data is smooth, yes, no evidence of, so that I know of. No. Well, I just said for, for, for Euler and various people playing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There's nothing like this. Mm -hmm. There used to be at yeah, the time for SQG. for SQG at the time, but then it, would have, it was ruled out. Uh, numerically as well and analytically. But that's uh, 20 years ago. Okay, so, but r right now uh, I don't know of any, uh, anybody claiming uh, uh, numerical simulation where there are singularities for smooth initial data. Uh, okay, so in this uh, framework, uh, I have to say that Resnick, in his thesis in Chicago, he proved that uh, as a weak solution, is uh, their global existence in L2, and the problem of uniqueness is a big open problem for this problem, for SQG. Okay, okay so uh, allow me to add a, a parameter to the system because uh, I'm going to mention several references and in order to 
to quote those references is good that I add a parameter. Okay? This parameter is in the power of the Laplacian. I'm going to add an alpha. So I'm interpolating the system from 2D Euler to SQD. Alpha equal to 0 is 2D Euler, where theta is the vorticity. And alpha equal to 1 is SQD. Okay? So uh, in for the global existence, uh, 2D Euler is critical. So one, there's global existence for alpha equal to 0. But when alpha is strictly bigger than 0, it's an open problem. And uh, and radial uh, well and so for the purpose of my talk, let me point out that uh, radial functions if theta is radial, then it's a stationary solution, and that has to do with the powers of the Laplacian preserves the symmetry okay? and makes the nonlinear term zero. Okay, so that's for the introduction. And the theorem I want to present is that we prove that there exist non-trivial global solutions, smooth, for the SQG equation. Okay? How are these solutions? How do they look like? Well, okay, so let me take... Excuse me, this is for the modified one or...? The uh, this is for alpha equal to 1, SQG. So l l yeah, the modified one, I'm going to uh, okay. call it... Uh, generalize SQG, okay? And uh, any time I don't mention SQG, I will say some alpha. Okay. So uh, this is for SQG. And so the solutions are going to be a perturbation of a radial function, theta, where theta is going to be 1 inside this circle. Outside another circle, theta is going to be 0. And in between, it goes from 0 to 1 in a smooth way. Okay? Actually, it's going to be a C2. Now, it's going to be a perturbation of this. And the perturbation is has going to have a three-fold sim uh, symmetry. So we rotate by 120 degrees. We get the same uh, structure. And uh, these solutions rotate. And they rotate with a constant angular velocity. Now, the thickness in uh, our solutions, this thickness is very relevant for the proof. And the thickness is 0 0.05. Later, I will explain why. So these are the solutions. While we were working on this problem, uh, we learned from Dritschel, and uh, he published a paper where he actually uh, uh, computed explicitly solutions of the SQG of C1 half regularity. And these are also, these are the same thing, but they're an ellipse. And they're explicit. So it's an ellipse. Outside the ellipse is zero. And inside, uh, theta is smooth. Mm -hmm. and, and the way that he does is, is that he goes to the 3D uh, equation. And he computes explicitly uh, that the ellipsoids are rotating solutions for the 3D. So when you look at the, this, uh, the surface, it, it gives you this uh, uh, ellipse rotating. But it's not a patch. Inside, it's smooth. Now, where does the C1 half come from when you cross the, the boundary? OK, so let me, uh, so I'm going to um, uh, show you how, what are the main ideas and the tools in order to prove the theorem. So first of all, we're going to, in between theta equal to 1 and theta equal to 0, we are going to take the level sets of theta. And we're going to parameterize them by z alpha rho t. Rho tells me in which level set I am, and alpha tells me in what place of the level set. And uh, the function f is going to tell me how I my function theta changes from one level set to another. So we plug this in uh, in the equations, in the transport equation, and this is how it looks like. We are going to assume that these solutions are rotating solutions with constant angular velocity. 
So we impose that in our ANSA. So now Z is our unknown is going to be X, X of alpha rho. The function F uh, is going to be given. I'm going to explicitly tell you what F looks like, and it's independent of time. The, uh, then the unknowns here are going to be X of alpha rho and the angular velocity lambda. And since my picture is like this, I only have to show that the solution, the, the equations, that the solution solves this equation in the support of, uh, of F. F or the derivative of F. Okay. So how does F look like? It's going to be a function C4 function and has this uh, structure where A, remember A is going to be 0 0.05 and is monotonically decreasing and actually the, it will be very important for the proof that in the mi middle, so we, there will be another beta that when you add 1 minus A, you add a beta and you subtract a beta from 1 in those regions in between we are going to ask for a linear decay And when a tends to, to zero, if we take a to zero, we recover the problem for the patch. So the, the solution will be a patch. So we plug this ANSAT in the equation. We use the fact that the velocity are the risk transforms and we have the time derivative disappears. And we, this is the equation for lambda and x alpha rho and we have to solve for this. We have some freedom to choose the parametrization of x of a rho. It's going to be a perturbation of the uh, circle. So I'm going to define x alpha rho to be a function r that depends alpha rho times the vector cosine alpha sine of alpha. And now our unknown becomes r alpha rho and lambda. So we plug that in, that answer in the equation above, and what we get is this functional that, in order to be a solution, needs to be zero. Okay, so one observation is that if alpha is independent of, uh, sorry, r is independent of alpha, then what we are doing, we have is uh, radial solutions, then f becomes zero. Okay, and what we're looking for is R's that are depend on alpha. So, uh, so if we take R alpha equal to rho or any radial solution that is zero. Okay, so we are in the <coughs> the tool what we, that we're going to use is the crandall rabinovich theorem. Right, so. Um, uh, uh, our parameter mu is going to be the angular velocity is lambda and the function r is r, okay? So the goal is to find, um, uh, so if we, we look at the, the plane of solutions where let's say uh, this is lambda and this is r alpha rho and this line is r equal to rho, right? This line is a solution of the, of the functional. Then we have to find a lambda star and the space is x and y such that this condition satisfies. So that the Gato derivatives uh, around, we are linearizing around the solution uh, rho, r equal to rho, so around this solution, and we, we have to find x and y such that the Gotto derivative exists and they're continuous, and we have to find a lambda uh, together with these spaces that the dimension of the kernel of the linearized uh, operator is of dimension one, the co-dimension of the image is also dimension one, and then the fourth uh, condition is the transversality. 
So if those conditions are satisfied, Crandall Rabinovich says that you can bifurcate. There's a solution parting, starting from lambda star, where it's a solution of the system F. Okay, so that's the goal. So, in order to uh, introduce the, the ideas that are behind this, this was uh, used for, uh, for the vortex patch problem. So I'm going to go and review, uh, revise the vortex patch problem. Uh, vortex patch problem is now uh, we are dealing with a solution that the vorticity is, let's say, one here and zeros outside. It satisfies Euler equations. The curve, let's parameterize the curve as uh, T, C alpha T. I'm sorry. Like this. Then it's possible to have, uh, when you look at the evolution of Z, you can close the equation in terms of Z itself. So once you know, uh, how z looks like, then you can recover the velocity everywhere. And it sat satisfies Euler equations, to the Euler equations. Um, so this, uh, uh, since it's a transport equation, the values of omega will uh, remain uh, one inside the curve and zero outside the curve. So this is uh, uh, very well understood and was for the uh, Cauchy problem, uh, Chemin, uh, was the first to prove that this problem is globally well posed for C1 plus alpha. And later there was a, uh, another proof, a different proof by Andrea Alberto and Peter Constantine uh, of the same result. And, the resu and then one can apply Udovic's theorem to guarantee that this is actually, uh, there's only one solution, it's unique. Yeah. What about uh, SQG? Well, one can ask the same question for SQG. And one can close, uh, again, a system in terms of the evolution of the curve and the curve itself. And this was studied first by Jose Luis Rodrigo in 2005, where he proved that it's locally well posed in, in, in the space C infinity. Why? Because this operator, it's actually, when you linearize, you lose one log of derivative. So he, um, his proof is using a Nash-Moser scheme. Right. Then Francisco Gancedo in 2008 showed that one can actually uh, subtract anything in a tangential direction, any component that will not change the shape of the interface. And you can choose a, a component that gives you a, a and a special cancellation. And with this cancellation, you're able to, to close the a priori estimates in HK. Okay? So he proved local existence in HK. And recently this year, we showed that among all the patch solutions, this one is unique. Uh, and the global existence for this problem is open. Of course, all this uh, works for alpha uh, bigger than zero. And the question of exi global existence is open also for alpha bigger than zero. But in this case, we do have uh, examples of finite time singularities. So, let me briefly give you what is known. Uh, so in 2014, Francisco Gancedo and Bob Strain, they show that no splash singularities can be formed. So if you expect that a self-intersection between of the boundary, then the curvature must blow up. Mm -hmm. Recently, this year, uh, Sasha Kisilev, Lenia Riznik, uh, Yao Yao, and uh, Flatos, Andre Flatos, they prove um, finite time singularities, but um, they add a boundary. So instead of considering the problem in the, the plane, 
they consider a problem in the half plane. And they take two uh, patches that self-intersect with the boundary at one point and their symmetry. So under already since it's touching the boundary, so the card arc condition, all these um, local existence th theorems is fundamental that you have a control of the chord arc condition. But they are proving local existence where the chord arc condition fails. And they managed to prove local existence but for a small range of alphas. And the range, I don't know, it's 1 over 12 or 1 over 24, but it's uh, more or less, uh, that's the, uh, it's a fraction. Okay? And they prove local existence. And moreover, they are able, since uh, there's a lot of symmetry, um, that the patches attract each other. And they made the assumption, okay, let's suppose there's global existence. And they show a contradiction. If there's global exi existence, then both patches will self-intersect in finite time. If they self-intersect, Gancedos and Strange's theorem says the curvature has to blow up as well. Okay? But it's a contradiction, so it's really it's telling you that there's a singularity, but we don't know how it, the singularity looks like. Okay? This is with boundaries. And this is for alpha between 0 and 1 over 12. Excuse me, but this problem with boundaries is really a different problem. It is a different problem, but uh, from the point of view of um, uh, local existence... Oh, from those points of view, yes, but from the point of view of... Uh, of si Singularity. Singularity. Okay, yes, because I mean, it's, if there's no boundaries, th you have a problem with controlling how the patches, uh, the patches move, and you don't have any control of it. So maybe the singularity cannot form because the patches are moving so much that it dissolves the singularity. Yes, but this theorem is saying, if you fix the boundary, you put this, then the, these patches do not move from there, but they attract each other, and. It has to intersect, and so I think it's a very interesting result. It's true that it doesn't tell us anything about the, the, the problem in without boundaries. Okay, so uh, numerical uh, simulation. So there is numerics showing evidence of formation of singularities for the patch problem. And, and there's, uh, so um, uh, together with uh, a team in Madrid, Fontelos, Mancho, and Jose Luis Rodrigo, in 2005, uh, we found this uh, numerical simulations, um, and we took a patch. This is SQG, and these patches were attracting each other, and uh, at the same time uh, they are moving. Okay, but they attract each other, and in finite time they self-intersect, and the curvature blows up at the same time they self-intersect in the same point. And what was um, really interesting is that it was a self-similar um, uh, self uh, blow-up, locally self-similar blow-up. And this is the claim, and this is a conjecture. Um, so let's take an ellipse, now one ellipse, and, and see how it evolves. Well, interesting, if you take an ellipse which is very close to the circle, then the ellipse what happens is that it starts rotating, it changes the shape, changes the shape, but it, re it remains convex and nothing happens. If you take a longer uh, uh, ellipse, then it starts rotating, you, you lose convexity, but you gain it again and you keep going. And it seems like there's global existence. But when you take a longer one, then it loses convexity and it, it forms a finite time singularity at the same, the same type as we, we got for the two patches. Okay, okay so this, um, uh, so Dritchell and Scott have um, predicted another type of singularities. And uh, this is another example of an ellipse. And, and this is, so what Dritchell and Scott took this ellipse at some point before the blow up, before the singularity, and this is the how it looks like, and they zoom, okay? And the orange is the zoom. When they zoom, they have these instabilities. Then they zoom again. This is at fixed time. They zoom again, and they get these instabilities. They zoom again, same thing. Zoom, 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 zoom. It's a cascade of instabilities. 
This is beautiful. Okay. Okay. So, um, um, I'm going very slow. So let me uh, hurry up. Uh, so some explicit examples for the so state uh, for the patch problem. Uh, the circle are stationary solutions for all alpha. Uh, Kirchhoff um, proved that the ellipses for 2D Euler are rotating solutions. So known also by these states. Okay, so it's an ellipse all the time. And we showed that for alpha is bigger than zero, this is not true. Ellipses are not rotating solutions. And we were concerned about the change of convexity, and we proved rigorously that the, uh, a patch can actually change the convexity back and forth. Okay. Um, then in 1978, Dean Manthabushki uh, predicted for 2D Euler the existence of rotating solutions with m fold symmetry. Three, here are three, four, but any uh, m fold symmetry. And this was a prediction from the numerics. And it was in 1982 that Bourbea proved the existence of such solutions. Hmm? And in 2013, Tufik Schmidi, Joan Matteo, and John Berdera uh, gave uh, uh, another proof using the Krandal Rabinovich theorem. Hmm? And they prove the existence, but they also prove that these solutions they are actually C infinity. Together with Angel and Javi, we actually prove that they are real analytic. Hmm? In 2000, Frankel showed that if you take the angular velocity to be zero, the only solution is the circle. And Tufik, in the same direction, showed that if the angular velocity is negative, the only solution is the circle. And then uh, you can bifurcate from many uh, other scenarios. For, for example, a patch inside another patch. And that's what they did. Or you can bifurcate from the lips. So uh, Tufik and Joan Mateo, they prove uh, C alpha uh, regularity bifurcating from the lips. And we actually prove that they're real analytic. And uh, OK, so how did I start working on this? Uh, uh, subject. Why uh, did I get interested? Well, um, when uh, uh, Tufik, Midi, Joan, and the Joannes um, uh, pr uh, proved this theorem, um, the first theorem, so I invited Joan to give a talk in Madrid, and I got uh, interested in this uh, subject, and then I talked with Tufik, and I told him, wha why don't you uh, try to prove this for SQG? I mean, for Euler, we know there is global existence, but for SQG, we have no uh, s any uh, solution that uh, exists globally mm -hmm. that are non-trivial. So a year after, uh, Tufik uh, uh, sent me a paper and that uh, he worked with his uh, former student, Hasainia, and they proved that for alpha bigger than zero and alpha smaller than one, these uh, solutions exist and they are C alpha. But there was a problem, they couldn't reach alpha, uh, alpha equal to 1, the SQG equation. So I invited Tufik to Madrid, he gave a talk, uh, we chat, and, and, and he explained us what was the, the, the why they couldn't do it, and they actually were not able not even to prove C infinity between 0 and 1. And, and then uh, Angel, uh, Javier, and me, myself, we, we we studied the problem with a different formulation, and, and then we realized that, the, I mean, the problem for going from alpha smaller than 1 to alpha equal to 1 is this log of loss of log of derivative. They were working on Helder spaces. To implement this in Helder, Helder spaces is quite hard, but to implement it in Sobolev spaces is trivial. So we changed our uh, um, um, framework and instead of working on the complex plane we we work on on the real world and and in solar spaces so at first we prove 
uh, the existence of M fold symmetry for SQG in the HK plus H3 plus log topology, and then we prove that the solutions are real analytic. Now, one uh, is true that uh, Kranda Rabinovitz tells you that is unique, the branch. So, where it overlaps, it's the solutions is real analytic. But Kranda Rabinovitz doesn't tell you how far you can go in the branch. So, maybe you have real analytic in first in the beginning of the branch, and then you lose the analyticity and it becomes infinity. I don't know. So, um, uh, it's a 10 to 3? Yeah, okay. A little bit more because you started a couple of minutes later. Thank you, Camilo. Okay. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, so let's, let's look at this and the, for, the, for the patch. So now, uh, we're going to bifurcate from the circle, right? And uh, we assume it's a rotating solution, angular velocity lambda. Uh, so now our ANSAT is R alpha cosine of alpha sine of alpha. We plug that in uh, the uh, SQG equation and we get this function that has to be equal to zero. When R alpha is a constant, this is automatically zero. So we can apply the Kranda, we can go and try to apply the Kranda Rabinovich. So the spaces, and this is what I meant by adding the log of, loss of the log of derivative in the uh, Sobel spaces, well, is just uh, to assume that that integral is bounded in L2, and that's enough. And our spaces x is going to be, as it, it is for the v states for Euler, is going to be the sum of cosines. Right? And we are going to ask this to be in the space uh, hk plus log, and then the space y is going to be the sines. Uh, we have the imaginary for the Crandall Rabinovich, and now let me just point out one a part of the Crandall Rabinovich is to see that the dimension of the kernel, the linearized part, is actually dimension one. So we take the linear part and we want to see an element in the kernel. Uh, we take the element h equal to cosine of m alpha, we substitute that in the linear part, and what comes up is that this equation has to be equal to zero. As simple as that. So it's giving me the eigenvalues and the, the sorry, the eigenvalues, the, the um, velocity, uh, angular velocity, and it has for each n fold, you have this velocity, right? Of course, now, so the problem is reduced to, say, to taking, to bifurcate from these uh, angular velocities. And then, of course, one has to check the co-dimension of the image and the term personality. But it's as hard as, as this, okay. So the hard part here was to choose the right spaces in which you can work. The a real analytic uh, uh, proof is that you choose uh, um, uh, spaces that are real analytic uh, properly in order to the framework to work. Okay, so let's go back and, 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 and see what happens in the smooth case. Now in the smooth case, uh, remember we are bifurcating from rho cosine uh, alpha sine of alpha, so now it's, this is a smooth uh, profile. And f is going to be given. Uh, there's no loss of log derivative because f is smooth, our solutions are smooth. So we don't have to worry, here the, the mixed norms of this, the solid volume mixed norms is okay. And, but again we take the cosines to be uh, our uh, space x. This is the uh, linear part, and we have to look for the element, an element in the kernel. So again, we, we do as before, we substitute uh, our, this ANSAT in this uh, functional, and what we get is not a scalar equation, we get a function, where I tilde looks like this, T tilde looks like this, and T, til t is an uh, elliptic integral. Okay, so we need uh, so we need to solve this. For the case of the patch, it's just a scalar equation. If we take b to be one and we take the limit at a goes to zero, we recover this. We recover the formula 
of the angular velocity for the patch. Okay, so uh, quickly, uh, what is the problem? P tilde m is not self-adjoint, but it's compact. It's a op uh, compact operator. We have a smoothness in I tilde. This is because of f. And using and using the properties, uh, we are able to show that there exists a solution. How is this? Well, um, briefly, uh, the reason is that uh, the, the, uh, the anti-symmetric part of the operator, it gets small as we take this guy small. So the goal is to find, to prove, you, you boil out uh, the problem to, to end up to showing that the eigenvalues, there's a gap between the eigenvalues. Here you don't know one, any single eigenvalue. But for the symmetric part, you can have a guess. And this is a numerical guess. And you can rigorously prove the error you make. Now, taking this sufficiently small, we can make the eigenvalue of the whole thing to be close to the symmetric one. How small has this has to be? 0 0.05 is enough. Okay? And, and uh, uh, how do we do that? Well, uh, we play with the f in order this to work out. Um, uh, so, uh, once we show that we can, uh, there's a solution where it has to show the regularity. So this is a bootstrap argument where we take advantage of the regularity of f. And, and we have to prove uniqueness. And we have to prove that the co-dimension of the image is one and that the transversality is also applies. That is uh, uh, also, we managed to do that. And let me finish in this uh, three minutes uh, some remarks and some very recent results. So this is a, uh, 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 this solution is a perturbation, right? So if we perturb a little bit f, everything should work. So uh, that f is uh, uh, has that uh, profile is not a, a, a requirement, okay? Perturbation of that works. Um, can we get, uh, we prove that the solutions are C2? Um, that's just because we ch chose F to be C4. If we ch make our F smoother, but that will, will make everything, maybe we have to take a uh, thinner, um, uh, this distance to be smaller, then uh, we can make a, uh, the solution to be of higher regularity. Uh, we, since this, in order to show that this is a small, we use a computer assisted proof, we have to do this for each m. So it's not a theorem for all m, we prove it for one single m, m equal to three. But we believe that uh, if you put any other m, you have to crack the numbers, and, and maybe this 0 0.05 will be modified, but it will certainly work. And this can be extended for any alpha, in particular for 2D Euler. Okay. And now, very recent results. So what I just talked about is in the archives. And what I'm going this slide will be in the archives in, in a couple of weeks. And is can we get the computer, get the proof of this uh, the existence of the solutions without the computer? And and the answer is yes, by bifurcating from the patch. And the way we bifurcate from the patch is that now this A, A is, the, is this distance. We are going to um, bifurcate from A equal to zero. A equal to zero is the patch. And at the same time, it A moves to the branch, it opens up the smoothness of the function. Um, uh, when uh, then, if uh, okay, so if we do this, uh, the idea is that we rescale, uh, uh, we scale the profile f, and what is surprising is that this works for any m, 
and for any profile f. f can change sign, it does not have to be monotically increasing, it can have any shape, it just has to go from 0 to 1. Okay, but uh, here we, since it's a grand Arabian image, we cannot tell you how how much it opens up. So we cannot reach the solution. Okay. And that's all. Thank you. Questions? So all of these solutions are periodic in time, eventually, right? Yes, yes. So, so you, for this problem, there are no solutions that are not periodic in time, they're global, but they're not? Oh. Is it that it's compact support? Could you have a Gaussian which is very narrow? Okay, so compact support makes, so I think, so the question is, for example, in the stationary solution, right? So the result of um, uh, Frenkel that proves that for 2D the vortex patch is uh, uh, if it's stationary, it has to be a circle, right? Uh, but you can construct stationary solutions of 2D Euler that are, are not completely, uh, uh, completely supported and they are not circles. Okay, so the fact that it's completely supported, it, it's already telling you that there is some restriction, very uh, strong restri restriction. Okay, so to the problem, but can you construct this from a Gaussian or something? Else? And the answer is yes. Okay, so yes. But it gives restriction, for example, in the stationary. So I think Frankel's result is also true for SQG. And it's also true for a perturbation of the, a smooth perturbation of the patch. Do these things rotate in any direction? Okay, so, so, uh, so uh, it's open, so to fix results says, um, uh, so this, these solutions is the angular velocity is, is explicit and they're all positive. Mm -hmm. And you know, in order to prove, to use the Kanda Rabinovich, right? Now, I'm not saying maybe there's another perturbation that has this, the structure of the other symmetry and, and you, uh, the angular velocity is different, I'm not saying that. But in order to prove the Kanda Rabinovich, but two fixed results for the 2D Euler says that if it's negative, there's the only solution is the uh, circle. I believe that can be extended to SQG. And also to the case of the smooth case as well. But that's something to be done.